Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to interact with something or pick it up or absolutely anything you want so it could also be open a door but essentially we're going to need to hold down a key in order to do what we want. So in this example we're going to hold down E to pick up an object and we'll also have a widget on screen showing us how far we've progressed through holding it. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So I've got a 3 in here because this is also a dynamic system in which each individual blueprint can have a different time on it. So this one here will take one second, so we go up to it, you see it says hold E to pick up, we have a progress bar, we hold E, it will take one second to fill up, and it will be destroyed simulating we've picked it up. This one will take two seconds, so you see that takes two seconds to fill up and pick up, and this one I believe was five, or maybe three, I can't remember what I said it as, there we go, it think, I believe it's five. So this works perfectly like so, so we walk up to it, we have a widget on screen telling us to press E, or hold E, sorry, when we do we have a progress bar, displaying how far we are holding it through and then once it gets to the end of that progress bar we pick it up or like I say do anything you want so it could be open a door pick something up interact anything you want so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it so what we want to do first is we want to create our widget which we're going to put on the screen now we're doing this first because we're going to set up a few variables in here which we'll use in the blueprint so to do that what we're going to do is in the folder that you want to put this in we're going to right click go to user interface and add a widget blueprint I'm just going to name this hold widget as that makes my sense to me as I'm using this specific widget just for this but you can name this whatever you like and open it up straight away. In here I'm going to add a progress bar like so. I'm just going to scale this up to the size I want. I think about two of these blocks will be a good size. Let's make it a little bigger like that. So I think that's good and then I'm going to anchor it down there as well. So I'll put it to the bottom and just move it up to be in the middle like that. So I think that's going to be good and then I'll just add a text above this as well and in here I will just write hold E to pick up like that. Again you can customize this however you like and I will just anchor it there again and also increase the fonts a little bit like so. So I think that's going to be good for me. This is just setting up to see what it's going to look like and that's good for what I want to do. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to the graph here so we can set up a few variables. We're not actually going to do the coding in here yet We'll do that later. So the variables we want to set up and create are two very simple ones. So we're going to hit the plus variable like so. This one I'm going to name time held like so. And I'm going to make this one a float. So this is how long the player has been holding down their interact button for. Then I'm going to hit plus variable again. And this one I'm going to name max time held or max time hold or anything. Leaving that also as a float. And what this one is is how long the player needs to hold it for. So time held is how long they have max time held is how long they should and actually we'll set up the code in here as well we may as well do that now so what we're going to do is go back to the designer select the progress bar here and then under progress and percent we're going to hit bind create binding what we're going to do in here is we're going to get the time held so get time held divide that so come out of that and get a float divided by a float and we're going to divide it by our max time held like so and that return value will go into the return value of the return node and that is all the code in here so it's going to get the time held, so the time the players hold it for, amount of time they need to hold it for, divide that by each other, and then that is it. So what it's going to do is the return value needs to be a value between 0 and 1, so that's what this will do. So if you need to hold it for 5 seconds, we're going to divide the amount of time we hold it for by 5, therefore getting it between a value of 0 and 1, therefore filling up our progress bar how we want. So we can compile, save, and then we can close that as that is all we need to do in the widget. So now let's set up our item or whatever you want to interact with. So for me, I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class and get an actor to create a new actor blueprint. This one, I'm just going to name item pickup as that's what this is going to be. But again, this can be absolutely whatever you like to use this for. Now open it up straight away. In here, I'm just going to set up a basic item. So I'm going to add a component, add a cube like so, leave it as a default size. And then I'm going to add another component. This one is going to be a box collision. Now you're going to want to add this as well. I'm just going to scale this up be a little bit bigger than what it is and essentially this is the area the player has to stand in to interact with this so you can make this as big or as small as you want but the player has to be inside of this to pick it up or interact with it once you've done that we're going to compile and go to the event graph we'll delete these three nodes here then we're going to create a begin and end of wrap event for this box collision so we're going to right click on the box collision up in the top left components list up there add event add on component end overlap right click on it again add event add on component end overlap then for this, out of the other actor, for both of these, we're going to cast to our character. For me, that's the third person character, but for you, it's going to be the third person, first person, whatever you've named it. And like I say, 
we're going to do that for both of these and this just means this is when our character is the one that is overlapping the box collision otherwise it would be absolutely anything that overlaps it after this we want to come out of the cast to third person character off the begin overlap and we're going to get an enable input the one off of the end overlap we're going to disable the input and this means we can only interact with it when we are in this box collision the player controller is just going to be get player controller and the target will remain as self put it in like that after the begin overlap so off of enable input we're going to create widget like so and this class is going to be our hold widget that we just made and just set up return value of this we're going to promote to a variable and we're going to name this one widget ref as that's what it is it's a widget reference and out of this i'm going to then add to viewport so what this is doing is it's going to be adding this widget onto our screen when we're close enough to it and to remove it that's very simple we'll just come out the return value again and just get a remove from parent plug in that into the disable input there and i'll just double click this to get some root nodes so all this is doing is when we are close enough to the box we're going to enable the input so we can press e and put the widget on the screen when we get far enough away from it we'll disable the input so we can't press e and take the widget off of the screen so now we need to set up pressing e so i'm going to do this via an action mapping so let's go to edit project settings once this loads we're going to go down to input on the bottom left down here and we're going to hit a plus action mapping now you see i already have quite a few this is just from previous tutorials i'm going to create an interact action mapping so we're going to hit the plus action mapping there and we're going to name this one interact i'm going to set this key to be the e keyboard event you can set this to be absolutely whatever you like and the benefit of using action mappings is we can set up multiple keys keys for different consoles and we can also set up key bindings but once you've created that action mapping there we're going to close this and back in the event graph we're going to right click and search for what we just made so i need mine interact so you see we have action events interact there like so and now you can see we have that in here so what we're going to do now is we're going to create another variable so we're going to hit the plus variable here and i'm going to name this one is held question mark like so off of the pressed of this action event i'm going to set it to true and off of the released i'm going to set it to false so when this is true we are holding an e when it's false we're no longer holding e or your interact key so that is what that's doing it's just letting the system know if we're holding down our interact button so i'm going to leave that like that and just move this code up a little bit to get it there like so then towards the end of all this i'm going to hold down g and left click to get a gate plugging the enter into our set is hold to true the open into our add to viewport and I'll close into our remove from parent. I'll double click this to reroute it again just to keep it organized. And so what this does is this means that if we are close enough and we press E we're going to fire off this code. If we're not close enough and we press E nothing's going to happen. It wouldn't anyway because we've disabled the input. However this is just a better way of doing it as well. It's more efficient it stops it from breaking and you're being able to do it anywhere. Then off of the exit of this gate, we're going to hold down S and left click to get a sequence, plug that into the exit. Out of then one, we're going to get a re-triggerable delay. The reason we're using a re-triggerable delay is so that if the player presses E, it's going to stop this. So if they hold down E for three seconds and they need to do it for four, if they let go and hold it again, it won't start from three again, it'll go back to zero. Or if they need to hold it for four and they let go at two, if they press it again before that delay's ended, it will restart at zero so it just prevents them from spamming it or breaking it or anything like that so a re-triggerable delay is what we want to use because what it does is i don't know if i explain that well what it does is essentially with a normal delay if you go back into the delay again so if this was a normal delay set to four seconds we go back into it at three nothing's going to happen with a re-triggerable if we go back in at three it will start at zero and go back to four again so i hope that makes sense off the completed of this we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch plug in a condition as is held so what this is going to do is this means that at the end of this delay it's going to see if we're still holding down e if we are then we want to interact with it so for me this is destroy actor but for you this could be anything so this could be opening the door picking up anything like that but again in this example i'm just destroying it but this here off the true of this branch is where you want to put your code for interacting with your object the delay of this, so the duration of this delay, sorry, we're going to right click a promote to variable. I'm just going to name this one max hold time. So this just means how long the player needs to hold down E for. I'm going to compile that. We can set its default value. I'm going to set it to two. And we have to also tick instance editable, or this little I down here, which means we can change this to be different for each instance of this blueprint. So if we put down multiple of these objects, 
each one can have a different time. So this is going to work perfectly for actually picking up the object or interacting with it, but now we need to set it up so the widget works as well. So this is also very simple to do. So what we're going to do is just going to scroll down under here just in a little bit of space, right click and add a custom event, and I'm just going to name this one timer, like so. I'm going to come out of this, and I'm going to set timer by event. The event I'm going to plug into this little red dot on our custom event there, meaning that when this custom event is triggered, it's going to trigger this event as well. The time we're going to set to be our max hold time here. So whatever we set this value as, it's going to have as the delay and the timer. So again, the timer is how long we want it to go on for. We don't need to do anything else with that. Just slightly above this, we're going to right click, add another custom event. I'm going to name this one stop timer. So if the player lets go of E, we obviously want to stop the timer and we don't want it to continue. So then out of the return value of our set timer by event, we're going to just simply pause timer by handle. Not plugging it into the set timer, but plugging it into stop timer. Now you might think we're just pausing it, we're not starting it, but when we then restart it, it will just go back to the beginning, it won't play it, it will start from the beginning again. So pausing it just means we're stopping it. Underneath this now, we want to right click, add another custom event. This one is going to be update timer. Now this timer does update automatically as well, but this is mainly the timer in the widget that I'm talking about. So we're updating the widget. So you can name it that if that makes more sense for you. Out of this, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, plugging that in there like so, with the condition of it's held. So again, this is just because we're making it to a loop. So this is held is going to stop the loop from happening when we're no longer holding E, as that's when we want to stop the timer. So off of false, so if we're not holding it, we're going to call function stop timer and then we're also going to drag and drop a reference to our widget widget ref there just put it just slightly above that i'll drag out of this and i'll set time held there back to zero like so so we're going to stop the timer from playing and we're also going to set the time held to zero meaning that the progress bar will go back to zero as well so this is what happens when we let go of our interact key before we pick it up or before it finishes playing then off of true, so if we are still holding it, we want to loop it and update our timer. So we're going to come out of the widget ref again and set time held once again, plugging that into the true this time like that. I'll just move this other stuff down to give us some space. And what we want to input as this time held is we're going to come out of the return value of the set timer by event again, and we're going to get timer elapsed time by handle, plugging the return value into the set time held there. So what this is doing is it's just, just getting the time which has elapsed since the start of the timer, which is obviously going to be between zero and our max hold time, and it's going to set that to time held, meaning this is going to be perfectly how long the player has been holding E4 with the interact key. And then to loop this, all we're going to do is out of set time held, we're going to hold down D and left click to get a delay, plug it out in there, with the duration is 0.1, as you want to update this every 0.1 seconds. Out of the completed, we're going to call function update timer like so so this will continually update the time held either until we let go of our interact key as that will then stop the timer or we interact with our object as that will then also stop the timer as well so this should now work perfectly for us so the one final step is to actually then use this so all the way back up here where we have our sequence of the exit of the gate we're going to come out of then one call function timer to then just start the timer and then out of this we're going to call function update timer which will then start that loop of updating our progress bar and our widget like that. Now this should work perfectly for us. So we can compile, save, and then let's test this out. Let me run you through what we're doing again first though. So if we're close enough to the box collision, it's gonna put the widget on our screen. And if we're holding E and close enough, it's gonna do the code. If we're still holding E after the time is done, it's gonna interact with our object, which is here. And then while it's doing that, so it's waiting for the delay, it's gonna start our timer so that we can then put this into a progress bar on the widget as well. And the timer simply is just going up to our max hold time, which we're setting, and setting the time hold in the widget as well, which is dividing it by how long we need to hold it for to get that progress bar percentage like so. And obviously, if you let go of E, it's just going to stop this loop here, stop the timer, and it will then also stop it here because we're no longer holding it, so this branch will come off as false. So like I say, let's compile, save, minimize, and let's put some of these in and test it. So I'm going to put one in here. I'll set the max time to two, I'll leave it as that. I'll put another one in, I'll set it to five or six. And I'll put another one in and I'll set it to one. So now let's hit play and test this out. So I'm just gonna go into first person to get a better view. If I walk over to this one, 
you can see we're close enough, we have that on the screen. So hold E to pick up. Now I left it as white text, black would be better as this is a white object, but that doesn't matter. We're going to hold E, you see it picked up. We didn't actually get it on screen though, and that's because we missed out one thing. However, you did see that we held it for one second and it interacted with the object, so it picked it up, it destroyed it. So this is a very simple fix to what we've done. We're setting our time held here, but we didn't set the max time held. So I believe we were probably just dividing it by zero. So all we need to do is simply just put it here in front of the gate. So let's just select all this code, including the gate, move it out a little bit like so. And then we're gonna come out of the set widget ref again. I'm going to set max time held, plug it in there and then into the open. And the max time held is just gonna be our max hold time that we have in here. So that is all we did. We just forgot to set that variable in the widget as well, meaning the progress bar didn't work. So now with that little fix done, this should work better for us. So we compile, save, minimize, hit play to test this again. We go up to it. You can see that we have the widget come back on our screen. We hold E, the progress bar will fill up and it went all the way up to one. When it got there, it then interacted with the object. We do it again here, but I'll let go this time. So I let go, it went back to the start. And I let go, goes back to the start and starts from the beginning as well. And you can see the object isn't being picked up either. So if you let go, it doesn't get picked up. So now if we go all the way through, it does get picked up at the end as well. And the progress bar works perfectly. And again, we'll do it with this six second one, just to show you, it goes down and let's do it again. So I think that'll be it for this video, which we don't know if we want to do. As you can see there, it works perfectly. So like I say, we've set up a system in which we have to hold down E or your interact button in order to interact or pick up objects. And this works perfectly with a progress bar. And when you let go, it starts from the beginning as well. It doesn't interact with the object and it looks great as well. Works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.